the Chamberlain for Warhammer Quest Cursed City. He is the second big bad man after Radikar the Wolf. So we've got Radikar the Wolf drying. I put the AK Interactive Rough Terrain texture paint on his base. So that's going to get set to dry. And while he's drying, we're going to keep building our, our villains. It looks like this one is only one, two, three, four, five, six pieces to put together on a 40 millimeter base. So I've got my base right here with the two little slots in there. And let's clear our working space. And we're gonna take a look at the frame that he comes on. So he is down in the corner, I believe, right here. Nice, all the pieces are kind of close together. So we're gonna clip them out and we're going to clean them up and we're gonna assemble. Hope everybody's doing well out there. It's Saturday. It's a nice, bright, sunny day here in Southern California. And if you are working on your own projects, I'm glad you could take the time to hang out with me today. So we're going to just be building and we can talk in the chat about anything you want, but Really, I'm going to be showing you how the experience is to take these models from in the box on the sprue all the way up to completion. So, see, this is a tricky one right here because you've got what looks like a, like a peg. So I'm going to need to keep that, right? It looks to the casual new gamer who hasn't really built many models before that you would clip all the way up to where that piece is. But I am pretty sure, I am 95% sure that that little peg is going to be needed. So you really have to be careful about where you're clipping. See, these are hard too when you are trying to look at where, where the clip is supposed to be. Where are you supposed to snap that model out of the sprue? You want to go right to the edge there, but yeah, it's tricky because I'm, I'm pretty sure that this little peg, yeah, I'm pre pretty sure we need to keep that. Okay, so put that down, and how many more pieces do we have here? I think that this fuzzy piece here goes with one of these guys. Oh, these two. Yeah, there's his hand that's holding up the candle. That's a tricky one because you're going to have some wax dripping down. You want to make sure you clear that. You don't want to clip that. Also, I find too, if you want to be careful about not clipping too much of the model away, what I like to do is clip a bit of that sprue with you like up to there and then go in and clean it up so yeah it looks like we want to get we want to get this piece but we don't want to damage the dog so we can try to fiddle it hey victor erickson welcome to my stream good to see you buddy Yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to just get in as close and as tight as I can with that. See, once I clipped it off the sprue, it's a lot easier to take your clippers and get in at that angle. If I try to get this off the sprue like that... Hello, Vorpal Spade! If I tried to get it like that, I might have accidentally nicked some of his leg or his body. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. So we make it a little bit easier by clipping the whole thing from the sprue. And now we can really clean up that flash get it as close as we can to the model without damaging it. Perfect. All right, so this is one of the more interesting models. It's got a lot more detail. I think it's more interesting to look at than Radikar the Wolf. Once it's all painted up, you've got a lot of interesting looking details from the candles to the crow to his little best friend there hanging out. So I, I, can't, I really can't wait to paint this one up. And look, he's got this hanging bat. 
just ridiculous. You know, guys, once I started looking, I stopped looking at Warhammer Age of Sigmar like Warhammer Fantasy, and I started looking at it more like a He-Man Saturday morning cartoon. That's just over the top and ridiculous and full of just insanity in every direction. It made it a lot easier for me to accept it. <laughs> I think if I kept trying to think of the system and the setting as a successor to Warhammer Fantasy, I think I would have lost my mind. All right, I'm taking my twist tie. I stripped off the covering so that I can reveal the little rod underneath. And that's the easiest thing that I found to clear this up and make it so that after the glue dries, I'm able to clear the chamber and get it going again. So the second part, after you've clipped out all your pieces from your sprue, all of you veteran hobbyists and gamers know this, but you have to clean the pieces before you put it on. Some people will glue the model together and then go in with the hobby knife and clean them up. I've always found that it's a lot easier to do it first because you might find that once you've glued the model together, there are some flashes sticking out, some weird looking places that you can't even access anymore once the model is built. So let's take a look at all of our pieces. I'll point out where these bits of flash are and then we'll keep going. There's one right there on the back of the torso. And I'm just gonna use the back of my hobby knife here to clear up some mold lines rather than using the blade. You can see he's got a mold line on his leg. All right, I'm gonna try not to make make that move too much because I don't know, I'm, use, I'm not using my microphone today. I like to use the microphone attachment that I bought for my iPhone but I don't want, uh, this. I'm just recording off of the iPhone's microphone right now, so I don't want it to be too much a weird sound difference than most of my other videos that I've been producing lately. I like this, man, this Raven, it's got good detail to it. It's got, like, I like the head, the shape of the head. Looks like this little flash on his back is a little trickier than I thought. They always say, don't cut towards yourself. Always cut with blade away so you don't injure yourself. I've done it so many times though that it's uh, it's okay. I'll be fine, I'll live. But if I had to teach someone new, if I had to start over again, I would learn it so that I would not cut towards myself. I would cut away. And this piece looks pretty good. Got a couple more. Hope you guys are doing okay out there. I'm not sure where in the world, what time it is, where you are. Like I said, it's a little bit before noon where I am in California. And man, I'm just really looking forward to getting some, some hobbying done today. There's a lot of craziness in the world, a lot of negativity, a lot of drama, as I'm sure you know, wherever you are. And uh, I have always found that painting is a great way for me to reset my my emotional, psychological barometer. Okay, you've got a little bit of flash here in the bottom of the cup, so I'm gonna get closer to myself off camera and just scrape it away. When, when the detail is fine, I, I don't wanna make a mistake by trying to do it in front of me on camera. So I basically just took my knife and I just continued to scrape towards myself until the bottom of this candle cup is nice and smooth. I mentioned this in my review video. I really like how this a uh, candle holder. You don't see this in in uh, miniatures. You don't see the the cup with the handle and the candle sticking on. A lot of times you've got just single candles like the uh, Sisters of Battle have a lot of just candles like stuck onto their armor or the word bearers. But uh, I love this Ebenezer Scrooge holding the candle in a little little candle holder like that. I think that's such a weird quirky little little thing. All right, let's actually build this guy up now. That that was phase two. We've got, we've got them all cleaned up now. All the pieces are ready to go. So we're gonna look for the right hand that's holding the staff and the uh, center part of the back. Now they say you can dry fit them. And uh, if that may be, then I've never found a right way of doing it. Usually anytime I try to dry fit these pieces, they always come out looking weird. So. I'm gonna get the dry fit just well enough so I could see where the angle is that I have to push the model in together and then we're going to add the glue. So this looks like it's about it. And then once you 
push that in there, it should slot in nicely. So what we're going to do is put some plastic glue along the seam here so we make sure that both of these pieces get stuck together. And then we're going to put some plastic glue into the pipe there. And we should be good to go. Now I'm saying plastic glue, but I also am a huge fan of plastic cement. And um, I find that plastic cement has a little bit more of a thickness to it that will allow you to uh, really push and hold the pieces together. There we go. Yeah, once you find, once that uh, peg and slot find each other, it's a lot easier to get the other parts of the models to join up. All right, yeah, that looks pretty good. I like his little staff with the, what is that, a dragon head on it? Okay, okay. So while that's drying, we're gonna move on to adding, looks like the, uh, it's like the front part, but also the stockade hangs over him. But then there's also a little bit that is going to hang in front of the model. Man, again, Games Workshop is doing some really interesting things with how they're making these, these pieces all match up. Like, this is the torso piece. It's got the chest, but it's also got the stockade that hangs up behind him over his shoulders and his head. All right, so it looks like it's going to go on something like that. Behind the staff, right? If if we're looking at the artwork. So we're gonna be putting our glue on and then we're gonna kind of sl slip it on and then push it back so that it fits into that peg. The peg is gonna go into this little part right there. I'm just gonna get some all around. All right. I think in terms of model quality, like the different pieces and the way that the model, the models look, the most interesting I think is Tor Torgilius. Actually, no, I take it back. I think the most interesting is Gorsla, the grave, the grave guy, the pyramid <laughs> head. He looks really cool, but I think Gorslav is a definite second choice. He's a definite runner up because of how many interesting parts you have to his model. Okay, yeah, once you get the right angle, it slots in really nice and it just pushes together really well. He looks a lot slimmer, like skinnier than the model. Grandpa Creeper, hey, hey, Brady. Yeah, see, when you look at the model like this, doesn't he look like he's a little bit more portly, a little bigger, a little bulkier? Also, when you look at this, I realize this is his trouser, but when you look at the model, it almost looks like this is his leg. I guess you could tell it's, it's pants, but the musculature, when they build it out like that, I, I can't help but think of like uh, corn models that show their thighs. They like to show their manly knees and big burly thighs off. Okay, we're going to let that sit for just a little bit to dry. But while that's happening, I'm going to be taking the model and I'm going to... Should we glue it on yet? Let's, it says we're supposed to glue on the arms next, but I'm afraid that because the big torso pieces, he just looks hotter on camera, <laughs> or fatter on camera. <laughs> yeah, the camera adds 10 pounds, I guess. I'm gonna wait just a second before we add the arms on, or the arm and the head. I'm gonna let these three pieces set a little bit more. We're gonna glue him on the base and we're gonna glue his little doggy friend on there with him. So whenever you're, slotting a model onto a base, I found the best way to do it is put the glue where the pegs are going to go, then find a little bit of a flat area there so you can get some glue in there. And you don't need too much because once the pegs are in, the glue is really going to set them to the base and then the flat area is just going to make it so that you can press it down, press these models down into where they're supposed to be. Yeah, it's a little tricky because I just took a look at the back of the model. It almost looks like the model is coming apart. Uh, then it dries, the pegs 
aren't all the way in. Yeah, you want to make sure the pegs do get set all the way in, and then when you've got when you've got it pushed down, the pegs are all the way in. You can also wipe the bottom just to make sure if you get any glue on the peg, if you set it down, it's not going to rip up whatever surface you're on and it won't pick up any any extra dust or debris. I'm sorry, I was working in the garden earlier before I started filming and I just had the idea to come in here. I'm going to wash my hands before the next video, I promise. I, I know a lot of people out there that are watching this later would be like, oh, wash your hands. Always wash your hands. Okay, Two, three more pieces left. Let's do his dog, his little doggy friend. This is going to be an easy one because this, the peg is right there and it's going to slot right into the side. So we're just going to line him up and get him onto this peg. Oh, look, he's even got sculpted onto him the dog's left legs so weird <laughs> so you can't ever see in other model kits like the bretonians the bretonians have a wolfhound kind of dog that comes with it you you'll have the the piece by itself <laughs> working in the guardian i should build that people you've got you've got the wolfhound by itself that you could use as a bit for a different for a different model. With this one, you can't. This this dog is only going to go on Torgelius because it doesn't have a left side of his body. So you can't really save him for your bits box. That's kind of the good thing and the bad thing about these models for Warhammer Quest, Cursed City, and most other starter sets out there. You really have to use them for the models they were built for. And it slides in super easily. There's no real trying to figure out the plane or how high or how low it's supposed to go because the pegs line it up really nicely. And then, like I said, he's got the left side of his body already sculpted on. Okay, let's go on to his head. We'll put some glue on the peg and we'll just slot his head right in there. Yep, sometimes it takes a little bit of wiggling around. If you're going to be doing it like I am and gluing your pieces together, you want to make sure you get the right angle and you push it in as far as it can go because you don't want the glue to set and then you come back later and you realize, oh, it's it's not lined up. Like the back here looks like it might be separating, splitting apart, but it is lined up. There's no hole in the seam there. Everything is pushed together nice and tight so that when the glue dries, it's all where it should be. The last piece is going to be the candle arm here. So we're going to put some glue right at the shoulder. And it looks like this people. This one doesn't even seem to slot in as much. It's almost more like just fitting into the socket there at the shoulder. And the sleeve rests really nicely. Oh, I missed a bit of flash there. I don't think I can get that yet, but I'm going to have to shave that off once this guy dries. All right, not my proudest achievement, but I am a little bit rusty when it comes to building these models. So I apologize if you've commented and I missed it because I was focusing too much on the model, but this is your Torgilius, the Chamberlain. Great detail now that he's built up, guys. I love doing reviews of these models and I figured this is the best way to do it rather than building them all up and reviewing them all together. If you're only interested in seeing Torgilius the Chamberlain, then this is how you're going to get to see him. Man, his expression is great. The detail on the bat and the, the wolfhound there. I like the texture to his beard. His weird little pope hat. Chamberlain sounds like from Dark Crystal. I love Dark Crystal. I'm, I'm really sad that they're not doing a second season. Okay, look, there you could see a little bit of a danger is going to be that seam between his left arm. Hey, Universal Acorn, welcome. Yeah, this is such a cool model. It's the second villain model I've built up. Got my Radicar here. So size comparison, smaller, more diminutive, but I think there's a lot more detail packed into this than Radicar. There's a lot more interesting things to look at. With Radicar, what do you got? The two-headed wolf, that's pretty cool. Weird looking Vorpal blade. Get the liquid green stuff. Yeah, you're gonna need to use that to seal up them holes. Fist bump. And he's got some scars on his chest. Whoop, whoopee, big whoop. This guy looks so weird. Yeah, compared to the Russian vampire, this Tor Torgilius the Chamberlain looks just so much more interesting. 
And like I said, you got to start looking at Age of Sigmar not as much as like a grim dark Warhammer fantasy. That setting is its own thing. Age of Sigmar to me is just Saturday morning cartoon craziness. And having accepted that, I've moved on with my life. I've 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 found the the ther I've gotten the therapy I need, guys, to not hate Age of Sigmar as much because I was comparing it. You can't compare it. They're completely different. And uh, I know everybody says that Age of Sigmar is its own thing, but I just had I can't wrap my head around the lore. I try to read the lore for all of this, and you know that's its own thing. Our video is already going at twenty minutes. Nobody wants to watch a live stream of just one figure for twenty minutes. So thank you guys for sticking through it. And I really appreciate you all checking out my live stream. I'm going to be doing something different for the next one just because I don't want everybody to be getting sick of Warhammer Quest Cursed City. I'm going to be building up Commissar. Oh, oh, oh. So stay tuned for that, you guys. Thanks for watching this. And uh, we'll be back with more Warhammer Quest Cursed City. I'm going to be putting on the AK Terrain Rough Texture. And I think I'm actually going to do a review on this product now that I see how it works. I've used it. I've seen how it how it dries and how easy it is to apply. I'm uh, I'm gonna probably do a video review on that. But it looks like next is gonna be Hargrim, Captain Hargrim, who's uh, doing his pole dancing routine with his halberd. So so strange for like a skeleton champ. Like compared to the the white white king on the steed that's coming. Oh man, what a beautiful model that one is. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video.